electrostatics implies statics means stationary. So we are going to talk about stationary charges, the positive and the negative charges for example. Now let us see a simple experiment of a plastic ruler rubbed on silk attract bits of paper. The video was there before. So what happens exactly? The ruler acquires positive charge when it is rubbed on the silk cloth. Now then we have the bits of paper which is having positive as well as negative charges. The positive charges on the ruler attracts the paper because the paper acquires the negative and the positive charges like this. And hence, they get attracted towards the ruler. So we have the ruler gaining charges due to rubbing. Hence, it is having a positive charge. It tries to attract the negative charges from the paper. As a result, the paper bit themselves gets pulled. We also have another example which is quite common. The bits of paper, the same bits, can be attracted by bringing a comb or a ruler rubbed against your hair. But here, the comb or the ruler acquires negative charge. All of you can try this experiment at home. Now, why does this happen? And let us learn more about these charges in the electric dipole. So let us consider negative and the positive charge separated by a distance too. So we have the dipole moment, electric dipole moment, P, which is passing from the negative charge towards the positive charge. It is given by the product of charge Q into the distance 2L. So P is equal to Q into 2L. The direction of the electric dipole moment is from negative to positive as we saw there in the dipole. Let us consider this dipole again. Let the distance be R. So what we find is that this direction P is from negative to positive. The force between the charges is directly proportional to the magnitude of the charges Q1 into Q2. F is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So F is directly proportional to Q1 Q2 upon R square. F is equal to K Q1 Q2 upon R square is where K is the constant of proportionality. That is 1 upon 4 pi psilon naught, which is equal to 9 into 10 raised to 9 newton meter square per coulomb square when calculated. So F is equal to Q1 Q2 upon 4 pi epsilon r square, a very important equation. Epsilon is the permittivity of a medium. Permittivity implies allowance, how much it allows. Epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. K is the dielectric constant of medium, where K is equal to epsilon upon epsilon naught. So epsilon is K epsilon naught. We have the dipole again. So the Coulomb law states that the magnitude of the electrostatic force of attraction between the two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them, the forces along the straight line joining them. So that's the Coulomb's law, very important law. Electric lines of forces. So if you have a negative charge, these imaginary lines are directed inward. If it is a positive charge, these lines are directed outwards. So we have the lines of forces with the path along which the positive, free positive charge move and place in an electric field is called lines of force. What are lines of induction then? 
It is defined as a path along which a unit positive charge moves when placed in an electric field in a medium other than air. That is lines of induction. So the lines of forces of a dipole have some properties. These are the lines of forces which are directed from the positive and they end on the negative charge. And they do not intersect each other. So the path along which a free positive charge moves when placed in an electric field is called lines of force. And the properties we can state for the lines of forces is it begins from the positive, ends on the negative. So it starts from the positive and it is ending on the negative as you can see and they never intersect each other. The next property, there are other properties as well. Now what are those properties? We have drawn tangent on the lines of forces and these are nothing but the direction of the electric field. So we have these as the electric field, these tangents. So the tangents drawn to the lines of force at any point gives the direction of the electric field at the point that is the direction of intensity is same as the direction of lines of forces. The lines of force do not pass through conductors since free electron that is negative charges are present but they can pass through insulator. So we have these lines of forces. Again the lines of forces are perpendicular at the surface where they start and where they end. The lines of forces have tendency to contract in length. The property helps us to explain the attractions between the unlike charges. The lines of forces exert a lateral pressure on each other. This property helps to explain the repulsion between the charges. The lines of forces are more in a region where the electric intensity is large and widely spaced in the region where the electric intensity is less. Actually, Coulomb's law is not directly visible since most charges are never point charges. However, Coulomb's law is quite useful in our initial study of electrostatics, hence it is important. So that's all for today. Thank you.